Hi there and welcome to the latest webinar in the series brought to you by the Spectronics Consultancy team. This webinar is going to focus on successfully using iPads to create video modelling interventions. And my name is Katie Lyon and I'm a speech pathologist on the team and here are the rest of the Spectronics Consultancy team. You've got Greg O'Connor who's our teacher, Amanda Hartman and Charlene Cullen who are also speech pathologists. Together we've put together a growing collection of webinars on a broad range of topics, uh, lots to do with using apps on the iPad but even broader than that, using inclusive technologies in general. And they are available um, as a Spectronics online subscription and they can be found at spectronics.com.au slash online. But this one is going to focus on video modelling. So we're going to take a look at what is video modelling and what makes it so effective, how to go about developing your own video modelling instruction, and what apps are out there that help us to easily and efficiently create effective video modelling interventions. So let's think about what is video modelling. Video modelling is an observational learning tool where desired behaviours are learned by watching a video demonstration and then imitating the behaviour of the model. So basically it provides good visual models of skills that you want to target. It's shown to be a really effective strategy for children and adults with autism spectrum disorder to teach a wide variety of skills, but it has a broader reach than that. It is also useful for anybody that benefits from instruction being presented visually and we know that that can include people with intellectual disabilities, it can include people with memory difficulties, people with acquired disabilities and these strategies can help them to promote independent functioning, positive behaviour and even to improve social skills. There are three different types of video modelling. One is where you take a video of another person and show and show that as the model and obviously this one this this type of video modeling can be uh, easier to produce and create um, than others because you might be using a peer who is able to display the demonstrated the the desirable skill more easily and so taking the video and creating the video is a lot more straightforward then you've got video self-monitoring where the video is actually of the person doing the desired skill. Now this may be a little bit harder to capture but it might be more effective depending on who you're using that video with. Some of the people that we're supporting need to have themselves featured in the video or photos of themselves in stories or social stories in order for them to be meaningful. So video self-monitoring can be a more effective strategy for some people, but it can obviously be a little harder to take and get the desired skill um, taken on video, but also then to edit because there may be some parts that you need to edit out if it's the undesirable behavior. And we'll talk about that a little bit more, but we want to focus on the behaviors that we um, that we want to see, not the ones that we don't want to see. And then there's a third type of video modelling and that is point of view modelling. So that is where the video is taken from the point of view of the person themselves doing it. And there is a little bit of research around particularly using this in, uh, in play and how to uh, play effectively, but um, it is less less done because um, just of the logistics of actually getting it to happen. The beauty of having a mobile device such as the iPad to do this means that we now have the built-in camera to capture video so easily. So prior to the iPad or other mobile devices with a built-in camera, you used to have to get a video camera, take the video, plug it into your 
uh, computer, make sure that it was downloaded correctly, then do some editing, then export it, and then we needed to make it accessible to the students that we're working with so that they could view it easily. But now with the iPad, all of those things are so much easier. And so we're now seeing the release of some apps that target video modeling specifically, and we'll touch on some of those. But more so, there are some apps that are developed for generic purposes, bookmaking or, um, or uh, screencasting or movie editing that can really be used to create engaging and motivating video modeling strategies. So we'll take a look at some of those more generic apps that are available. How can video modeling be used? Well, video modeling can be used to increase appropriate social interactions. So if you've got somebody who struggles with how to greet somebody appropriately, uh, a video model might assist that person to know um, how to shake hands with somebody or how to wave hello to somebody, what is appropriate in that situation. It can also help to improve communication skills, such as maintaining eye contact and other nonverbal communication, but also conversational skills, like waiting your turn in a conversation and using manners when speaking with someone. It can also be used to improve functional daily living skills. So if you're teaching somebody to learn a new skill, like getting dressed or how to cook, how to make a cup of tea, personal care, for example. You can use video modeling to uh, assist them to learn that new skill. And we can use video modeling to promote positive behavior. So it can be used to in situations where you're wanting to teach a person what is appropriate, how do you teach them to take their turn, how do you teach them to stop, um, stop uh, undesirable behavior like biting or kicking and we can use video modeling to show what is appropriate in that situation. Why is video modeling so effective? Well, it's a visual based instruction. So we know that students with autism spectrum disorder, people with autism spectrum disorder, learn from visual information more easily than just from verbal information. And that, that's the same for a lot of the people that we're supporting. As I mentioned, people with intellectual disability, people with memory difficulties. It helps to back up the verbal information that we are providing people if you have some visual information there. It's more concrete and more stable than the verbal information that we're giving to somebody. If we just give somebody a verbal instruction and don't back it up with any sort of visual cue, such as a keyword sign, such as a picture, such as a symbol, such as a video, it's gone. And so when we back it up with one of those visual cues, it can help the person to retain the information and to understand what they need to do. Let's take a look at the benefits of video modeling. So video modeling can be used to promote the acquisition of new skills and also to promote independent functioning. It can be combined with other instructional strategies such as social stories. So we can take the video of the desired behavior, but we can couple it with the, the key points that we know about creating an effective social story, such as providing informa uh, providing the narration in a oh, I this, I that. We can provide the narration over the top of the video. We can provide the language in a positive way rather than focusing on what we don't want them to do. We focus on what is what we do want them to do. So we can combine it with what we know about social stories with video modeling to make a much more effective strategy. It's a motivating platform. So not only is video very engaging for a lot of the people that we're supporting, but the fact that it is a mobile on a mobile device and much more accessible to a lot of the students because they have their own iPads, they can go back and re-watch it um, over and over again and it's really engaging and motivating. 
Video modeling's been shown to maintain skills over time, and it's also been shown to transfer skills across persons and settings. So if we were teaching how to share, for example, we might want to take a small series of short videos showing different people sharing and showing it in different settings at school, in the playground, in class, at home, so that the person is seeing how to generalize those skills. And video modeling has been shown to be effective in doing that. Okay, so there are three steps to creating your own video modeling intervention. Firstly, you need to identify the target skill. So there might be people that we're working with that really could benefit from a number of different video modelling interventions around different skills, but it is important to stick to one skill per video. However, in order to help with generalisation, it does help to have a number of videos, a small number of videos, reflecting different settings, different people and different scripts around the, the one skill. So, for example, if you're talking about how, uh, if you're trying to teach an appropriate greeting, you may have a video modelling intervention developed for greeting teachers at school, for greeting people out in the community, for greeting friends, for example, so that it helps with generalisation. The next part is to produce the videos. Now, of course, you can use anything to take the video footage, um, but and with the iPad, of course, you can use the inbuilt camera, which we'll take a look at in just a minute. But it is important to get input from the team and from the person's peers about the script prior to taking the video and also to get permission from the family to develop the video. Obviously, you're going to have uh, most of the time that person in that video and also the person's team. So you want to consult with those people. Some tips around producing the video itself are that you would re it's really helpful to reduce the background distractions in the video because you want the focus to be on the subject and what skill they are doing rather than what's going on in the background. And it can be really distracting when there's lots of other things happening in the background. And you obviously want to model the behaviours slowly and as clearly as possible. And they, you need it to be a clear video, of course. The third step is once you have created the videos and the video modelling intervention, which is what we're going to go into in just a moment, you want to implement the intervention. So that includes rehearsing the video regularly. You want to rehearse that video in the appropriate setting uh, and also you want to rehearse that video prior to wanting the behaviour to be exhibited. So you don't want to do it after the fact. Um, you can do it as a way of reinforcing what you want to see, but you want that person to be very familiar with what's expected of them prior to the situation occurring. You then obviously want the person to uh, practice and review independently these video interventions as much as possible because if they're exposed to it and they have lots of practice and lots of rehearsing and lots of review then when it comes to the time where they need to uh, display that behavior or show that new skill they would have had uh, maximum time with the video modeling intervention. As we said, the beauty of having a mobile device such as the iPad to do this means that we can now use the built-in camera. And so the first app um, that we're going to take a look at is in fact the camera. However, we will look at a number of other um, apps today that have uh, not necessarily been used to, uh, not necessarily been developed to create video modeling interventions, but do lend themselves very nicely to the creation of these strategies in a really quick and easy way. Some of the ones that we'll take a look at today include iMovie, Book Creator, V Download, Explain Everything, Puppet Pals and Videolicious and we'll also take a look at uh, a couple of apps that are specifically designed for video modelling as well. 
as I said, the camera app, which is native to the Apple ecosystem, and it's an inbuilt app that comes with the iPad, is one that you're obviously going to need to familiar, familiarize yourself with before creating these video modeling interventions. So we, I know many people out there would be very familiar with um, the camera app, but I'm just going to go into it just to highlight a couple of the features. So it's that first one on the left hand side there. So you can see here when we open the camera app, you've got a few uh, buttons. So the first one down on the bottom right hand corner is the choice between a camera, so taking still shots, and if you slide that bar across, you can then take movies. Now, obviously, we're talking about video modeling interventions. So most of the time, we're going to want to take a combination of both still shots and video modeling um, videos for these video modeling interventions. Next to that, you've got the flip camera. So this will take the photos either from the front facing camera or will flip it to take to be able to take photos of um, the rear facing camera or of yourself doing something. And then under options is uh, where you can specify whether you want the grid to show or not. And then it's just a matter of uh, selecting the button in the middle of the screen there to either take the photo or to take the video. Depending on how big your iPad capacity is, what your battery life is, etc., will depend on how many photos and how long the videos can be. And depending on what type of iPad you have, whether you have a mini or a, um, a standard size iPad or an iPhone, for example, will depend on the specifications of the camera and the video and the quality of. Uh, and the clarity of the image that you'll take. Okay, so the next one that I'm going to show you is iMovie. And iMovie is a fabulous app full of a heap of fe different features to create really professional looking videos. Um, but it is a, a, a great app in order to edit videos as well and to create professional looking video modeling interventions really quickly and easily um, with some audio over the top of it with some music playing in the background um, and make it into a really professional finish. So first up what I'm going to do is select the uh, plus button on the bottom toolbar there and I'm going to create a new project. Now you'll see um, this is a fairly uh, full featured app so we're not going mm. to go into the, all of the features in a lot of detail. However what you will see is um, on the left hand viewport there are uh, all of the videos that are currently in my camera roll. So in order to um, work with a video it needs to be in your camera roll. Now we'll talk a little bit later about what if videos are not in your camera roll and it's on the internet for example. But um, let's assume that uh, we've, we're going to work with the top video. So I've just selected that and I will select the, um, the arrow button to put it down into my working space. So you can see that my video goes for 28.7 seconds. Now I can just slide across to any part of the video um, with my finger and I can view the video by selecting play. So in this video, for example, we have um, we might want to create a video modeling intervention on appropriately asking for something that we want. And as you can see at the beginning of the video, we've got Olive here who snatches the pencil. Now, if we're only wanting to reinforce the uh, behaviors and the actions that we want displayed, then what we might want to do is actually cut that out of our finished product. So iMovie allows us to do this. If we select the, um, the video down in the bottom viewport 
and get it to the part where we want it to be cut. So you can see that it allows for very specific, precise um, uh, focusing on various parts of the video. If I select one of those and double click on that, you can see that I've got some options in terms of what to add to the clip. And we'll discuss that in just a little bit. But what I want to do is once that is selected and highlighted using that yellow highlight border, I'm going to swipe up with my finger where that red line is. And it almost is like I'm cutting the clip with scissors. So it will cut the clip. Then what I can do is highlight that clip, double click it. And if this is one that we don't want, we can just delete that clip. This is the transition slide. We can delete that clip. And so now you can see that we will start with we will start with the appropriate behaviour in terms of asking for a turn. Now, if we want to record the narrative over the top of it and we don't want that background, um, that background sound playing from the clip, what we can do is select the clip again, double click on, click on it, and you can see you've got your volume slider there. We can turn the sound off so that now when we come onto our clip, that sound from the clip no longer, no longer plays. But what it can be reinforced with is some audio for the clip. Now the, to add audio to our clip, you'll see on the right hand side um, in the middle of the screen in that middle toolbar, you'll see that we can add a recording. So if we add a recording such as If I want to turn, I can ask. I will wait my turn until Hope is finished. When Hope is finished, she will hand it to me. I can ask and Hope will hand it to me. So you can see there that um, we've been able to now add some narrative over the top of our video clip, which uses some of the principles that we talked about. We're using first person language, we're using positive language and we're focusing on what we do want the person to do rather than what we don't want them to do. So then we can do some further editing. If we're finished at the end there, what we can do is highlight that clip again, chop it, chop our video clip. Double click, delete, double click, delete. Now that's adding video. Now if we want to um, add to the end of our clip some a photo, because if we're thinking about video modelling interventions and what we know about social stories, um, it, it's good to finish off with a positive and also finish off with um, a perspective on how it makes the other person feel to reinforce that, uh, that it's an important skill to have. So. On the middle toolbar again, you'll see on the left hand side of that, currently we have the video uh, icon selected. If we select the photo icon, which is the middle one there, it's going to give us access to all of the photos in our camera roll. If we select camera roll, and we'll find a photo of Hope being happy that Olive has shared. We can now add some audio to this to reinforce that again. I can ask and Hope will hand it to me. Hope is happy when I share. Okay. The last thing that we might want to do is add some audio. Now you'll see down the bottom there that we have um, uh, in the middle toolbar there, the last icon on that left hand side is adding audio. Now we can add a wide variety of different audio um, effects and sources, 
but we will go into the sound effects and we'll add some applause. We'll just make that applause a little bit smaller. Make that a little bit longer. So you can play around with the length just by dragging from the clip itself. Now let's go back. Now that looks okay. Let's have a look at this. That looks okay. If I want to turn, I can ask. I will wait my turn until Hope is finished. When Hope is finished, she will hand it to me. I can ask and Hope will hand it to me. Hope is happy when I share. And we've added our applause. So really quickly and easily, we've created a really high quality video modeling intervention. However, if we want to make it a little more professional looking, up in the top right hand corner across the top toolbar, you'll see that we've got some settings here. Now we can apply a theme to that. So if I just select one of those themes, and you can play around with these, but if I select one of those themes, turn the music on, you can see it's now added that music to my project down the bottom in the green. We can add some effects such as fade out to black, fade in from black for example. Now we can play it. If I want to turn, I can ask. I will wait my turn until Hope is finished. When Hope is finished, she will hand it to me. So that's looking quite good now. However, we might also want to add some, uh, some text as an intro to our movie. So what we can do is add a title. Waiting my turn. Now that is going to, you can see here that that text is going to be applied to that whole clip. So we may in fact want to highlight that clip and chop it again. And now we can see that the text is not applied to that second clip there. Now let's have a look at what our project looks like with the video removed that we don't want shown. So we can edit within iMovie. We've added a theme and some text and some music in the background. And we've uh, taken away the video sound and added our own audio clip. Let's take a look at what it looks like now. Let's go back to our main page by clicking uh, that back button up there. And let's play this project. It will ask us how, uh, what quality we want. I'm just going to click no because it'll be quicker. If I want to turn, I can ask. I will wait my turn until Hope is finished. When Hope is finished, she will hand it to me. I can ask and Hope will hand it to me. Hope is happy when I share. Okay, so that's iMovie, a really handy app and fairly comprehensive app that allows you to create really professional looking, um, not only video modeling interventions, but movies for fun as well. And I would encourage you to um, take a look at the trailers in there as well because they, uh, they are really creative and, um, and really a lot of fun as well. If we then what we can do with this if, is that we can share the movie to a number of different sources. So it has those sharing and publishing features that we look for. And we can share the movie to our camera roll. Now once that movie's in our camera roll, it's in a format that we can either use in other apps or we can um, use a m much more freely 
when it's outside and published outside of the app itself. All right, so now there's, uh, apart from iMovie, which allows you to edit your movies, of course, and, and as we've seen, create a really professional looking video modeling uh, intervention. There are some other apps that are really handy to help you to create video modeling strategies. One that we have demonstrated in a number of our webinars, but because it has such broad application, is Book Creator, that first one listed there. Now you would have seen this most likely demonstrated in some of the other webinars that we've done, um, but it really does have a broad application. It enables you to create social stories, it enables you to create a lot of augmentative and alternative communication strategies, um, such as personal histories and book about me's, for example. But what it also, what, what the reason it particularly lends itself to video modeling is because it is one of the only book creating apps that are out there that enables you to use video. And so here you can see we've already created a book with photos and audio. Saying hello. When I meet new people, it is nice to say hello. But what we can also do is add videos into our uh, into our stories. So this whole book could be full of videos and I'll show you how we do that. Let's just delete our photo there. And you can see when we go to add an item, it will enable us to add directly from our photos and in our camera roll. And it is picking, it's actually picking up the videos as well. So if we know that we have a video in our camera roll, it will compress it and we can use it in our story. Okay, just show you that again. So Book Creator is one that enables us to insert photos, videos, audio, and obviously change all of the properties of the pages as well. Just add in another video, you just go directly into your camera roll by choosing photos. It will compress the video and then put it into the story. Another reason we particularly like Book Creator is the fact that now once we go back to where our books are stored, what we can do is export this using the uh, box with the arrow button out. We can open this book up in iBooks as you see there. So iBooks is a free ebook reader that is a free app that you can get on, on um, iPad and I'm sure you've seen that before but if you haven't I'd recommend getting it because what you can do is export this book that's been created in Book Creator into iBooks and it will open up on the bookshelf with the other books that you've created. Now not only will you be able to play the audio saying hello but of course you'll be able to play the videos as well. So it really makes it more accessible because you're not relying on having Book Creator to view the book. And what you can also do is when you go back to your library, if you start getting quite a, a huge collection of, um, of stories in your library, one way to organise the stories in your iBooks library is to go into Edit, select the book where you want to move it to, and you can see that we have uh, set up different folders. So I've set up a folder specifically for Jesse, so that when I go into his folder, it has the books on the bookshelf that are um, suitable for Jesse. So that's Book Creator and iBooks.
Book Creator is a really handy one to have as part of your toolkit for a number of different reasons. The next one we'll take a look at is a fun one. It's called Puppet Pals. And Puppet Pals really enable, I'm just using my spotlight search here to, oh, hang on, let me get out of that. Puppet Pals is a really fun one that was created to um, be able to develop your own puppet shows. However, if you get the, there is a, a light version or a free version that you can play with. Uh, however, if you get the, the director's cut, which is a purchasable version, what you can actually do is create your own actors from a photo. So this then opens up uh, a whole range of different um, uh, uses for Puppet Pals. So if we scroll down, you can see I've selected Hope and the Doctor's Kit because I'm going to make up a, a video modelling um, intervention and it might be a really useful app to have if you don't get footage of that person performing the skill that you're wanting them to demonstrate. This might be a way of still having them in the scene and in the video but just not um, but you're manipulating what they do within that video to demonstrate that skill. I'll show you what I mean. So we've chosen, doesn't have to be an actor, obviously you can see I've got the doctor's kit. So just from a photo, you can create these characters that you want in your scene. We'll go through to the next one and you can see in the purchasable version, the director's cut of this, that you can also choose your own backgrounds. So I've chosen one of um, a bedroom there. Let's go through now and we can play around with the size of the bedroom. We can make the actors or the items smaller. And this might be a really easy way if you don't, if you can't get the footage that you want to still have the person in that scene. We press record. When I ask you to pack away your toys, you say, yes, mum. You go to your doctor's kit. You grab your doctor's kit. And you put away your toys. Mummy is happy when you put away your toys. And Hope is happy. Something like that. So you can see the beauty of this is that you don't actually have to have uh, the person exhibiting the skill themselves but it's still considered self video self monitoring because they are technically in the video. Now you can see that we can save that. And we can go to our toys and we can export that either directly to our camera roll so that it ends up as a video. We can then um, also upload it, so it's put into our um, into our camera roll, which can then, of course, be emailed or SMS or um, or uh, uh, loaded up to YouTube, for example. So lots of different sharing options with this one as well. So Puppet Pals is a great one um, for lots of applications, particularly for videos self-monitoring um, and uh, also for developing social stories and the combination of the two as we mentioned. Videolicious is one that I have just come across and it is a really good one. It's a free app. It's the one that's listed up the top there. If I go into it, what it does is, is, a, is what it does is it allows us to Select photos or videos from our camera roll. So if I go in and I will select, let's do this a similar uh, setting that we had before. If I go in and I select the photos that I want, and I'll select a short video that I want as well. Once I've selected the videos and photos that I want in my story, 
what I can do is tell my story. Now what it does is it will allow me to firstly film myself. There I am. <laughs> um, so I can film, this is a story about packing away. Well, let's press record first, down in the bottom left corner. This is a story about packing away. When I have played with my toys, mum will ask me to pack them away. My room gets messy if I don't pack them away. I will pack my toys away when mum asks me. And you can see there that the video is um, counting down. I am happy when I pack my toys away and mummy is happy when I pack my toys away. So then what it does it, is it will play your video. This is a story about packing away. When I have played with my toys, mum will ask me to pack them away. My room gets messy if I don't pack them away. I will pack my toys away when mum asks me. You can see there that the video is um, counting down. I am happy when I pack my toys away and mummy is happy when I pack my toys away. So a really, really fabulous way of incorporating uh, you can then put music over the top of it and then you've got some export options. But for a free app, it's a really fantastic way of putting together not only some reinforcing video, but also embedding video interdispersed with um, other photos as well as a way to um, create those video modelling interventions. Now what happens if you don't have any video of the skill that you're wanting to um, the person to display. Now we know with things like YouTube that there are millions of videos out there that can be used as a demonstration in our video modeling interventions. But what if we don't want some part of the YouTube clip or what if it's too long or what if we just want a snippet of it? What if we want to edit those YouTube clips? Well there are many different apps out there that can help us with that but one of the ones that I want to show you is V Download. Now there is again a light version, um, there is a light version however this is the paid version and it just allows you to download unlimited uh, number of movies. But if we, um, say for example I want a video on how to tie my shoes or how to ride a bike or how, a new skill that the person hasn't yet displayed or I can't get their peers to um, demonstrate, for example, I can always go on and see what YouTube videos are out there and then, or elsewhere, it doesn't need to be just from YouTube, but you can see here that I've Googled to how you tie your shoes. If I click on one of those videos, it's just like a browser. It will bring that video up. Now you'll see along the bottom there, that you have a few, so we're in browse at the moment, you have a few different options. You've got a downloads button. Now it won't actually start downloading until you start playing that. Um, you can then select save. There are a lot of ways to tie your shoe. Okay, so then what we can do is when we go into our downloads, you can see there that um, we've got all of the, the videos that we've downloaded and if I just select that button off to the right hand side there I can save that button all the ads will come up but if I ignore those I can save that button to my camera roll and then once it's in my camera roll of course then I've got some video editing apps such as iMovie 
that I can then edit that video, add some music, add some narration over the top of it, get rid of the voice that's already in the movie. So you can see there that you then have a lot more flexibility with a whole heap of videos out there that may not be suitable in the first instance to demonstrate that video modeling that you're wanting to show. The, one of the um, other things that I want to demonstrate if you don't have the video but you may have created some really great social stories using some of the apps is, so let's go into Pictello which doesn't currently have support for, so Pictello is one that's been used quite, um, show all screens, Pictello has been one that's used quite um, uh, widely to uh, create social stories, create personal histories, just create talking books and it's got some really lovely features but it doesn't yet have the um, ability to uh, to embed video in it although I have heard that it might may be coming. But what I can do is I can Select one of my stories and export it as a PDF. Now just stay with me here. What I can do is I can export it as a PDF. I want to open my PDF. If I open it in a screencasting app, so a screencasting app is something that will just record what's happening on your screen and record the audio if you're talking over the top of it. If I want to open it in a screencasting app such as Open in Explain Everything, it will open it up into that app. It will take a little while just to open the document and you can see that it's going through each of the uh, pages that are in that book. But if we exported it as a PDF normally, it wouldn't have any of the um, the, the voiceover, and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be able to be exported as a movie. But now using the combination of Pictello in which it was created, and then opening up into Explain Everything, what I can now do is select record my book about feeling angry. Sometimes I feel angry. I'm angry, I shout. I feel angry, people are frightened. I can calm down. I can calm down, I can watch a Star Wars DVD. Now we'll just stop there because um, it's quite a long story this one. But if we then go across to the bottom right, you can see that you've got a few options there. If we upload it, into our, I think I've chosen the wrong one, movie to camera roll, because we've recorded a movie now, even though each of them were static slides that were in a story or in a PDF, because we've recorded and screencast and recorded our voice over the top of it, it's now um, considered to be a movie. So we can actually export that into our camera roll. It will compress it all, takes a little while as you can see. Had we done the whole book it would have taken a lot longer. And when, when it's done, it will then save it to our camera roll. We can then go into our camera roll and you can see that we have a movie. My book about feeling angry. Sometimes I feel angry. I'm angry, I shout. I feel angry. People are frightened. I can calm down. I can calm down. I can watch a Star Wars DVD. So whilst it's not technically displaying movies, um, what it is doing 
is playing automatically with some narration over the top, making it into more of a video modeling um, intervention than what it was before because um, it's able to be played automatically. Right, so up until now, what I've shown you are apps that haven't necessarily been created for video modeling intervention purposes, but are ones that can be used for a number of different purposes and video modeling happens to be one of those things. Um, there are some apps out there that are uh, suitable for video modeling and have been designed with that in mind. And I'll just show you two of those finally, very briefly. One is eye modeling, as you'll see down the bottom there, the yellow one with the purple uh, video. Now this one has actually been created for video modeling in mind. And what it allows you to do is obviously you can create more than one profile, as you can see there. Um, and if I go into my profile, it's passcode protected. And once I go in there, I can create a new video modeling uh, um, video so I can select the background color I can add a title there for example let's just do a very brief one brushing teeth so this is a um, self video modeling for brushing teeth um, let's record video modeling well, we might want to call it brushing teeth hey brushing our teeth Then we can add a video clip, as you can see. I'll just choose an existing one because I know it's in my camera roll. I have one there of Zach brushing his teeth. Choose that. Now you'll see that embedded in this app, you can actually edit your video content. So just very, uh, very simply, you can uh, cut the video and edit the video. Once you have cut the video, and edited the video you can save that you can obviously add more than one video in there but if you can then let's go next choose a reward screen screen so once the child has viewed that video they will then uh, get a reward now that reward can either be something that they do when they achieve that um, behavior that's shown in the video or it can just be a reward for uh, viewing the video so if we're going to choose a photo now camera roll we might say that after they view the video on how to brush their teeth and they do brush their teeth then we're going to go to the football now if you've got more than one profile set up you can choose who views that video and then of course you can re review it. Now if we go back and we go into Zach's profile, you'll see that he has the video, the, the video self-monitoring of brushing his teeth. And after he's viewed that video, he will get a star. And once he's reached five stars, then it might be a larger reward, for example. So that's, uh, that's eye modeling. The last one I want to show you is really, um, uh, this is the light version, Autism Mate, and it's a fairly new app that was created for people with autism in mind with visual scene displays. Now, as you can see here, if we go into, uh, say, for example, the bathroom scene, what you can see here is there is actually, this app can be used for a number of uh, purposes, not just video modeling. Uh, purpose but it can be used for communication uh, because we have the choice board there if we go into there you can see that we've just got a choice board with voice output I don't think the voice the sounds coming through there but um, when it's being mirrored but if we go into brushing teeth as you can see we've got a video set up um, as a video modeling intervention for brushing the teeth so the child can go in and see what they need to do prior to brushing their teeth. It's a series of hot spots within this visual scene display. So it's it, the idea behind it is that the child will know where to go and where to get more information about what they need to do based on a familiar contextual scene that is familiar to them. 
if we just go home there I'll just show you to create your own for example um, I've just taken a photo here of a bathroom and if I want to add that video self-monitoring of brushing of teeth for example as we could see very simple to um, edit we just go into edit mode again enter a passcode so it's the edit mode is passcode protected and then we have an option of adding a hotspot. We can change the background image if we want a different background image, but we want to add a hotspot. Now you can see here that it's not just video hotspots that we can add. We can add a number of different types of hotspots. We can add a schedule hotspot that breaks an activity down into the different parts, uh, an activity schedule, for example. We can add a voice hotspot that reminds the child what to do in a certain, um, as, a voice, uh, as an auditory reminder. We can have a choice board hotspot, which is similar to the one that I just showed you in the other bathroom for communication. But we can add a video hotspot. And if we add a video, now I've only got the um, free version here, so my symbols are limited. Um, so I'm just going to go into shapes. I'm going to select a green star. And it says, where do I want to get my video from? In my camera roll, I can use the video of Zach brushing his teeth. And we'll go out of edit mode. And now when I select the hotspot, it shows the video of Zach brushing his teeth as a video modeling um, intervention. So what you might find is that, of course, you need to um, uh, add uh, various symbols for the hotspots which you can do if you've got access to the full version but I do encourage you to explore that one because it can be used for a number of different reasons for communication for um, video modeling for activity schedules it's all built into this visual scene display uh, format and context So that concludes the, um, the apps that I wanted to show you today. But we're just going to finish off by thinking about how to create video mod modeling interventions. Now, as I've mentioned, we want to use first person narrative. It needs to be written from the perspective of the person so that they can rehearse that script in their head, similar to social stories. We want to focus on the desirable behaviour rather than focusing on things that we don't want them to do. We want to focus on the positive. We want to focus on uh, what we want to see. We use positive language. We don't focus on the negatives and what we don't want to see and say, we don't do this. We, you know, I don't want um, to do this. We want to focus on positive language. And we model very slowly and very clearly for the person to be able to um, view the video and, and process what's happening. Now, I have mentioned this, but really do focus just on one skill per video. But you may want to develop a number of videos on the, uh, demonstrating the same skill, but in different settings with different people in it so that it can help with generalization. So if you're uh, teaching a child how to um, appropriately greet somebody, you might want to have just one, that's one skill per video, but have multiple videos in different settings and with different people in it in order to teach that skill and generalise that skill for that child. And as we've said, we need to involve the person, we need to involve the um, their peers and their team as well because uh, they would obviously have lots to offer in terms of the language we use, um, the settings that are most appropriate, the um, uh, what is uh, most relevant to that person. And of course we want to restrict background distractions when we're filming uh, because it can be very distracting for some of the people that we're working with if there's a lot going on in the background. Just very um, finally, some tips for implementing social uh, video modeling interventions. Just focus on one at a time and you can build up from there. Practice regularly and before the situation occurs. So it's no use showing immediately 
prior to the situation happening, um, you need to have that practice, that, that regular practice, so that when they get to the situation, they can recall what they need to do. And it's no use showing the video after you've expected the behaviour to happen. But of course, you can do that as a way of reviewing what they need to do. They need to have the opportunity to practice the skill as well. So um, to in order for them to develop that skill. And of course, we want to collect data and work on generalization by having multiple videos, by giving them opportunities to practice across multiple settings um, uh, in order to ensure that generalization. I do just want to uh, direct you to a few references there. Um, there are two references which I find really have found really useful in developing this webinar. Uh, and they're listed there, and I encourage you to um, follow the shortened bit.ly links, which are listed there, um, and it will give you a lot more written information about video modeling interventions. Just to finish up, um, lots of the apps that we have discussed today are listed on the Apps for Special Education list that is up on the Spectronics website and I encourage you to go there because they are actually, uh, we've taken all the hard work out of it for you and we, this is a, an, a rubric which is used in a lot of educational settings to evaluate apps that they are implementing into their schools and we have done, you'll see down the left hand side column there that there's fields in which you can evaluate apps according to. So. Um, what sorts of what sort of feedback? What sort of publishing features? What sort of reporting features? Um, is it user friendly? Is connectivity is um, Wi-Fi connectivity required? All of those things we um, we uh, will evaluate the apps that we put up on our apps for special education list um, according to those fields. And of course, you this lets you. Um, you do need to think about what makes a good app. So um, does it have good publishing features, which means that you can share it with other people? Does it enable you to import your photos and videos, when, especially when you're talking about video modelling, that is highly relevant to, um, uh, to whether the app's going to be successful or not? Um, does it have some inbuilt support? We love apps that have some inbuilt support because it means we don't have to go searching for that support elsewhere, either on web pages or in manuals. Does it have a free or a light version? That can be a very handy um, aspect of an app, particularly if they tend to be fairly expensive. And as you've seen today, multi-purpose apps are fantastic. They enable you to use those apps for a number of different reasons and it means that you can have a smaller number of apps within your toolkit but you can do so much more with them. Okay, well thanks a lot for um, getting to the end of the webinar and we hope you found this useful. Um, there are lots of other webinars as we have mentioned up at spectronics.com.au slash online for you to have a look at and we encourage your feedback as well as your suggestions for future webinars. And of course, online is not the only method of uh, training that we do. We also provide on-site and hands-on training for your staff um, or for the people that you're working with as an alternative to online training. So if you're interested in that, you can contact consultants at spectronics.com.au. Thanks a lot for coming along or thanks a lot for listening and I will... See you around in some future webinars.